Violet the Pilot by Steve Breen. Hmm, what's going to happen in this book, do you think? Looks interesting. Blueprints or something. Violet the Pilot by Steve Breen. She looks like she's got a friend there with her, too. Hmm, look at this contraption. She's reading a book called Popular Science Monthly. Everyone in town knew that Violet Van Winkle was a little different. For starters, she and her parents lived in an odd-looking house next to the junkyard her father managed. And while other girls were playing with dolls and tea sets, Violet played with monkey wrenches and needle-nose pliers. I love that. Looks like their house is sort of like a ship, which I like even better. It looks like they enjoy looking at the stars up there. Looks like a fun house to live in to me. Violet was a mechanical genius. By the time she was two, she could fix almost any broken appliance in the house. By four, she could take apart the grandfather clock and completely reassemble it. Since she didn't have any friends aside from her dog, Orville, there's Orville, he's being very helpful, she would spend hours tinkering with things from the yard. Violet's parents were very proud of her, although they weren't too happy the time she put a lawnmower engine on her cousin's tricycle. Oh no. <laughs> wonder if that's the cousin's mom, probably. He looks a little concerned. Look, Orville is covering his eyes, sort of. I'm sure they'll catch him. There she is, tinkering. And what is she going to make? The older she got, the more interesting Violet's creations became. Around the time she turned eight, she was building elaborate machines from scratch. And not just any old machines. Flying machines. Look at, look at her father's reaction to what? Oh, look at that. Her parents couldn't believe their eyes when they saw Violet zoom by for the first time. They were a little worried in the beginning, but they quickly saw that she was a pretty good pilot. Careful not to hit the house, Violet's father would yell, and put on a sweater, her mother would add. Violet used anything she could find in the junkyard to make her wonderful contraptions. That's so fun. It's a radio flyer. The dog's waving, too. I even like how she has a V on there for, her, for Violet. There was a tub bubbler. I love bubbles. Look at that. I think the cat wants to come, too. Or maybe the cat's just not sure what it is. And a bice copter. And the rocket can. I think I'd be... More likely to go on that one than this one. The pogo plane. <laughs> I guess the dog's not welcome this time. Not enough room. The slide guider. And the wigamajig, to name a few. That looks more like just a plane. Yeah, I think maybe the maybe Orville doesn't want to come anymore. <laughs> He's sitting it out. Violet's engineering was pretty sound. The only real hazards were tall trees and piles of junk in the yard. Oh, Orville came along in that one. And bugs in her teeth. <laughs> Kids at school would see Violet eating lunch alone and make fun of her strange books and greasy coveralls. Claude and Clyde Mulrooney were especially obnoxious. Oh, that's not very nice. Aw. Don't like that. Then one day, Violet noticed a poster in the drugstore window. Air show, October 20th. It read, that's only two weeks away, Violet thought. Can kids fly in the show? Is a homemade aircraft allowed? That night, Violet sat in her room thinking about the air show. She knew it would be a good feeling if one of her planes won a prize, and maybe then the kids at school would be nice to her. Violet pictured exactly where she would hang her blue ribbon. Right there in her room. Look what she's got on her walls. Clearly, she loves flying. Looks like she's getting to work. She's even painting it a pretty yellow. She and Orville spent the next few days combining the junk, combing the junkyard for just the right materials. When they had collected a giant pile of stuff, 
the building began. One day, the Mulrooney twins happened to pass by. Look, it's that girl from school, one of them said. What are you doing, weirdo? I'm building an airplane, she told them. The twins exploded in laughter, then mumbled something mean as they walked away. Orville barked at the boys, but Viola just went back to her project. Take it easy, buddy, she said. We're too busy to worry about them. Oh, I don't like those boys. They're not being very nice. They need to go find some projects of their own. Oh, look, it's sort of like her, looks sort of like her house with it being a boat in the front. Finally, days of hard work, Violet had finished making her flying machine. She named the magnificent new craft the Hornet. Wait till the people in the grandstand see me flying this, Violet said to Orville. Oh, look, Orville's taking the pictures. <laughs> The test was a success. Wow, look at her fly. <laughs> Looks like she used just a general win a regular window for the window of the plane. On the day of the big air show, Violet took off, bursting with excitement. Her parents' faces had beamed with pride when they wished her luck. And she thought about that as she flew through the clear autumn sky. She calculated the trip would take about 20 minutes. She would arrive just in time for the start of the show. Oh, goodness. There she is way up there. Something's happening down below, isn't it? Suddenly, something caught Violet's eye. In the river below, a group of people were waving frantically. Violet lowered her altitude to get a better look. A troop of Boy Scouts had run into trouble while canoeing. Violet knew she had to help fast. It wasn't easy rescuing all the boys, but Violet piloted the Hornet with careful precision. Oh my goodness, look, there we go. Here she is. She's got them all. Saving the Scoutmaster from going over the falls was particularly dangerous. Violet dropped the Grateful Scouts off at the hospital. There they can see them all waving. There's the helicopter landing. I guess she's able to land her plane in a helicopter spot too. Wow, what a machine she has built. Then she checked her watch. 3.30, she said to Orwell sadly. We've missed the air show. She turned her plane toward home inside. It was a miserable feeling. That evening... Violet had no appetite for dinner. She just went upstairs and sat on her bed. All of a sudden, she heard lots of noise outside the house. She and Orville went to the window and discovered that a crowd of people had gathered. Somebody spotted her. There's Violet, the boy shouted jubilantly. There's our hero. The Van Winkle stepped outside, squinting from all the flashbulbs that were popping. The press, the mayor, the fire and police chiefs, even kids and teachers from school had all learned of the rescue that day and had come to praise her. Young lady, please accept this Medal of Valor as a token of our gratitude and esteem, said the mayor. And he gave Orville a new collar with a license that read K-9 Hero. <laughs> That's so fun. From that day on, Violet's parents let her fly whenever she wanted, but her mom still made her wear a sweater. <laughs> oh, wow. Now she's on the front of the magazine that she was reading in the very beginning. And she's waving. Do you think that man notices her? That's a great picture to end the story. Violet the pilot. You never know what you can do when you put your mind to it. Happy reading.